Hi, and thank you for joining me here today on SPE 60, where we aim to bring the knowledge and advice of industry professionals to you, our members. I'm your host, Harvey Fernandez, and today I'm here at Shell Australia in the Perth office, and I'm gonna be interviewing a very knowledgeable and important man, Mr. Steve Fimister. He has 20 years of experience and he's the upstream general manager for Shell Australia. Thanks for joining me today, uh, Steve. Pleasure. And I appreciate you, your time. Not at all. Uh, so let's kick things off. I know you have a chemical engineering degree, but I wanted to know what made you start uh, in the oil and gas industry? What made you get into it? Um, I came into the oil and gas industry um, in the early 90s, uh, and I did that principally had the opportunity to be part of something really big. Okay. And um, it was a, a particular time when energy was, was the big new growth sector. Okay. A lot of graduates coming out, I studied in the UK, a lot of graduates coming out of engineering in the UK were going into oil and gas. And I did that because I wanted to be a part of this, the next yeah. generation of, of people making a difference. And it also offered me an international career. Okay. Um, I am British by birth, but now an Australian citizen, but I've had the opportunity to travel all over the world with Shell. Okay. Um, and that was really one of the key things that brought me into this industry because it is such a global industry. Definitely. Okay, so I've got a few questions here. The next question I have uh, has actually come in from one of our members. Uh, so what roles have you done uh, at Shell and what countries has it taken you to? Yeah, so I started in Europe uh, as an engineer. So a chemical and miner mineral engineer, actually, by training. Uh, I spent most of my early career in engineering, process engineering and chemical engineering. Okay. I did that in both the downstream in refineries, but also then moving into the upstream after a number of years. And um, from there, I sort of naturally progressed into um, a number of other roles, project engineering type roles, um, HSE. And then at some point, around about six or seven years, and I, I got into economics and project economics. Okay. And that kind of opened a new door for me. Uh, and it would have been um, mid to late 90s, I got an opportunity to get into business development. Okay. And that's pretty much the path I followed for quite some time, for 10 or 15 years in commercial business development activities. And that took me to just about every continent. So okay. I've worked through North and South America, uh, across Europe, a little bit in Africa and the Middle East, yep. and then throughout Asia, um, particularly, of course, because of LNG and gas mm -hmm. in Australia. Um, and then in more recent years, uh, I've moved into more general management and asset management roles. Okay. So quite a sort of natural progression that you would find for a lot of people um, okay. in the oil and gas industry over 24, 25 year period. The final question uh, for this segment, uh, do you have any advice for students uh, looking to join the oil and gas industry with regards to professional development? Yeah, and well, indeed. Um, so if I think about my own experience, uh, what I would say is first and foremost is just jump in. Yeah. So when I started out, I actually thought I was going to go into the Air Force, which is what most of my family had done. And circumstances contrived against me and I came into this industry and I just leapt in and gave it a go. So have a go uh, and see if you can make a difference. But I would say it requires you to be flexible, uh, be adaptive and be really opportunistic. So one of the things I found in my career that has made a difference is sometimes you create an opportunity, more often than not it just comes along. Okay. And if you have the ability to grab it, do so and have a good run at it because you never know quite where it's going to lead. And as you heard earlier, I chopped and changed yeah. uh, different things in my career. So be opportunistic and grab those chances whenever you can. Okay. The other thing I would say, which um, is something I really look for when I'm recruiting and putting together teams, is make sure you've got a really solid grounding. In, in your own area. Pick something you're good at, yeah. uh, become very good at it, uh, because there's absolutely no replacement for competence, and over time there's no replacement for experience. Mm -hmm. And once you've got that base, you can spread out and to do all kinds of other things. Well, that's very valuable, thank you for that. That's all we have for you today. Thanks for joining me, and if you have any questions or any future topics you would like us to cover, just comment below or hit us up on Facebook. That's all from me today. I'll see you again next time.